Hello Fezwearers. Tyler's lab from Half-Life 2 and the second test chamber from Portal 1 have both been turned into Tyler's add-ons for Gmod. Both of these Tyler's were created by the same person, so they are made in similar styles. So let's begin with the test chamber 2 TARDIS. This TARDIS is based off the test chamber from Portal 1 and it is the place where the player acquires the portal gun. Because this door is a portal, it technically isn't big on the inside, which creates a bunch of questions whether this actually is a TARDIS or not, but that's a whole different thing. And on a side note, I love the animation of the portal both inside and out. The exterior has no extra skins, it's just this. But there are two different interior lighting options, bright and dark. But I think this lighting option may be a bit broken because I literally can't tell any difference between them, unless I'm just being stupid. The interior looks just like it does in Portal, with a few tweaks to it. The console is custom made, as there obviously wasn't a TARDIS console in the middle of a test chamber. The console is from place where the portal gun was when you collect it, which happens to make it in the centre of the room. There's so many details, big and small, to Portal and Aperture. Like these custom PCs with the aperture symbol on it, and more obvious things like the button, the portal gun and this radio. And there's also these rooms dotted around the place. I've no idea what they're for, but they look quite cool. Basically everything on the console has been used in Portal, like the radio being for music, which makes sense, but also weird things like the portal gun being a sonic charger. This has the quickest dematerialization I think I've ever seen in a TARDIS before, and its flight noise also sounds really weird, it's like some wind passing by. It has the default 2013 Vortex, but I hope it gets its own custom one at some point. While we're in the Vortex, I just want to mention how when you're in manual flight mode, the TARDIS is actually a bit off-center. You can see this from how it spins. I think this has something to do with how the portal works, but I'm not sure. It's not that big of a detail, I just wanted to mention it. And the rematerialization is a bit slower, but still pretty quick. And something else I want to mention is how good the lighting looks when the power is turned off. I'm not sure this is intentional, but I love the way it looks. Just before I show you the Kleiner's Lab TARDIS, which by the way is very detailed with many features, I would like to ask you to consider subscribing, as when I reach 1000 subscribers I'll be opening a new Discord server where you can suggest video ideas and know about any channel updates. We're only 200 subscribers away and I would really appreciate it. Kleiner's Lab was seen in Half-Life 2 and is very recognisable, which is why this TARDIS excites me so much. It has a custom exterior as obviously it was just a room in Half-Life and wouldn't have its own exterior, and it definitely wasn't big on the inside. The exterior is a vending machine from the Half-Life Exteriors pack. It has 15 different skins, which is insane. They mainly just changed the branding of drink being sold, but some of them like this one and this one are custom and reference different things, like this is referencing Sarah Jane Adventures. It has a large entrance version as well as different lighting options, and these two actually have visible differences between them. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't got around to playing Half-Life 2 yet. I'm only 19 years late, so I've only seen the original Kleiner's lab in videos, so comment down below any details I miss. I'll start with the default settings, which is the bright interior lighting with the normal entrance, but then I'll move on to the large entrance with dark lighting. From what I've seen, this is very realistic when compared to the actual lab. Because Gary's mod uses the same game engine as Half-Life 2, the design and texturing can be as similar as this is, which is really good. You may notice that there isn't a console in this interior, as in my opinion it would just feel off to have a massive console with a big old time router in the middle of Kleiner's lab. But the way this works is that it has controls in this central computing area, but it does have all the controls we're used to seeing in a TARDIS. There's some here, here, and here. But there are also some controls that aren't in this area, like the sonic charger over here and the scanners over here. It also has a couple extra rooms that I've never actually seen before, but I assume they were actually in Half-Life 2. But there's also an empty room behind these open doors that you can only access with V-Clip. There's literally nothing in here, I don't know what it is. This is the large entrance version with dark lighting. There's this door switch next to these massive garage light doors as you can't open them by directly interacting with it. But there's still a door switch over here as well. The dark lighting makes the walls and ceiling very dark with little to no lighting on them. And the majority of light coming into this is from the windows. This TARDIS also has a pretty quick dematerialization but not as quick as the portal one. And it has a really good vortex skin, which I'm like 80% sure is from Half-Life, but it looks great. And it looks like you're falling, kind of like in the Bill and Ted TARDIS. And the flight sound on this is also really cool. Watch the video on screen to see every new Who Doctors Tires and Gmod, because I show many unknown features in it. 